Welcome back. Um, this is the beginning lecture for section five, the social construction of gender relations. We've kind of been alluding to uh, the social construction and its importance in the construction, uh, the construction of gender identity over time. Um, spent some time looking at the biological explanations and the psychological explanations and and now we're starting to say well, what's the role that society plays here so according to uh, sociologists the sociological perspective on gender assumes the variability of gendered identities that anthropological research has explored as i was saying the biological imperatives towards gender identity and differentiation um, from our environments and psychological imperatives towards both autonomy and connection. Um, it was C. Wright Mills who defined sociology as the intersection of biography and history. Um, in his view, the goal of the sociological perspective would be to locate an individual in both time and space to provide the social and historical context in which a person constructs his or her identity. Uh, in that sense, sociology's bedrock assumption upon which it analyzes the structures and institutions rest is that individuals shape their lives within both historical and social contexts. Um, as we've, we've talked extensively about, it's not just the, the, the social context that's important, it's the historical context as well. And uh, it's, uh, according to Mills, it's where this idea of biography or your individual identity development um, uh, runs into history or the social structural um, context within which identity is actually constructed. Um, as I say, constructed, the social construction, we really do not know who we are until we see that uh, interpreted by others. Um, Mills was also very uh, concerned with and interested in um, how power plays into this social construction and why power is important in how we define who we are, um, both in our individual contexts and over time. To a sociologist, both our biographies, those identities, and histories evolving social structures are gendered. Um, and they're gendered within a power structure. So we must avoid both reflexive passivity and impulsive hyper-individualism. So when we think about these two concepts, um, we have to remember that what we're really getting at is, is this idea of gender being socially constructed. Um, but once we talk about gender as a social construction, uh, we, we could take this reflexive passivity perspective um, to mean that we are, as individuals, not responsible for what we do. Society made us like this, um, therefore it's not my fault. But that's really not what we're getting at here. Um, and then on the flip side of that, um, uh, we like to think in America, an individual can do anything he or she wants to do, or it's a free country and everyone is entitled to his or her, his or her own opinion. Both of these rhetorical strategy, st strategies are insufficient to understand what we're talking about when we're talking about um, the social construction of gender. So when we say that gender is socially constructed, what we are really saying is that our identities are fluid and the behaviors we construct from the values and images and prescriptions we find in the world around us are fluid as well. Our gendered identities are both voluntarily, or they're both voluntary, we choose to be who we are, and they're both coerced. We are pressured and forced to be who we become. And it's this constant struggle between these two, us choosing and society choosing for us, um, that ultimately 
lays the foundations of who we are over time. And how we understand ourselves as gendered beings changes over time. This is talked about in, um, in chapter five uh, when they talk about uh, the way you're treated as a young girl or um, a young woman uh, in, in reference to your gendering can be very different than when you're a postmenopausal older woman. So the gender construct changes within your own social structures. It changes over time in reference to the structures themselves, and it changes over time in reference to how we individually identify in reference to that gender construct. Um, so this, this social construction perspective takes into account how identity is formed through interactions with other people and our social institutions. Um, what's the tug and pull um, or the push and pull of gender construction? Um, as we understand ourselves and as we construct ourselves and as we represent ourselves to the rest of society, how do those uh, social cues that they deliver back to us impact what we're actually constructing over time? And, and you might say to yourself, well, they don't impact me at all. I choose who I want to be. But you might not be paying attention uh, to all of the the pushback coming from all of the places in your um, in your life. It could be uh, your parents uh, frowning upon the choice of hair color that you um, have decided upon, or it could be um, your friends uh, frowning upon your choice of a, a sexual partner. Um, you might not give it much credence and much credit, but those pushbacks on your character and identity formation, especially in relation to gender, um, are important and they are impacting. So when we're talking about social construction uh, perspective, uh, we know that gender different or gender definitions vary, as I've already talked, across cultures, they vary over time, they vary over a person's lifetime, they vary by racial, ethnic, and social groups, by age, and by social class. Um, uh, we'll take a couple of these. I've already talked about how uh, gender varies across cultures, um, what one culture might consider appropriate gender behaviors, another might not. Um, uh, take, for example, if you compare uh, gender formation in the United States to gender formation um, in Pakistan, you will find that the, uh, the gender cues will be very different. And the way that your society uh, impacts or the way that your society interprets your own identity construction uh, will be different based on where you're at. Um, uh, of, of course, over time, this is another thing that's important. We have to understand that um, in, in one period, for example, in the United States, um, the formation of, of gender was very structured. It was not fluid. It was very static in the beginning of our country's formation. And over time, the construction of gender has become more fluid as uh, groups, whether that's women or um, groups of color, minority groups struggle for power. Um, as they gain more power, they gain the ability to reconstruct the social structure as it is. And as women have gained more power as um, uh, transsexuals, those choosing a one of the non or one of, not choosing one of the binary binary gender um, selections, i.e., heterosexual um, male female. Um, we see that 
change as those groups gain more power. Um, of course, over one's lifetime, I already talked about uh, women and how uh, you might be treated differently as an adolescent uh, in reference to your gender construction um, than you would be as a um, a woman in her child rearing years as and then it, you would still be tre treated even more different as you move past uh, your child rearing years into that menopausal and postmenopausal stage of your life um, of course by racial ethnic and social groups um, uh, some uh, some groups you know we see differences within the categories of race uh, ethnicity and class um, not all women are treated equally. Um, if you are a white woman belonging to the dominant class, uh, you will most likely have more rights and uh, more responsibilities than if you were a, an African-American woman. Um, as I said, it also changes by class or by, by age, we talked about that, and by class, um, depending on how much wealth that you accrued or how much um, wealth and power your family has um, will depend on how you are allowed to construct your gender um, and along with other identity characteristics. This of course brings us to um, a, a critique of role theories. Uh, the social constructionist perspective is uh, in, in essence a critique of sex role theories. Um, uh, in order to understand the social construction of reality, in order to understand your own construction of gender uh, in your own lives, uh, we must move beyond role theories because the use of role minimizes the importance of gender. Um, uh, the use of uh, our, our role theory uses drama as a metaphor. We learn our roles through socialization and then perform them for others. But to speak of gender role makes it sound almost theatrical and thus easily changeable and and gender roles are, are not easily changeable and um and and to present them as if they're fluid and uh they're solely learned behavior um uh, kind of uh delegitimizes the impact of gender on individual identity um, they also assume normative definitions of masculinity and femininity and denies institutional and, inter and interpersonal discrimination. Um, this is important because if the meanings of masculinity and femininity vary across cultures over historical time among men, men within any one culture and over the life course, then we cannot speak of masculinity or femininity as though each were a constant singular universal essence so there are no universal normative def definitions of male and female um, or of masculinity and femininity and we have to be very clear with this because we see the differencing of gender role across cultures across time and we really muddy the waters when we present it as something that is very defined and um, and there are uh, definite masculine roles and definite feminine roles that um, that exist across cultures. This just does, just does not bear out with what we find in the real world. Um, we must move beyond sexual theories. Also, because they assume two separate spheres, gender is relational, one works in reference to the other. Um, uh, you cannot understand what female is, is is without male, you cannot understand what male is without female, and you cannot understand what a potential third gender is without comparing it um, to the male and female spectrums. Gender is also situational. Um, it depoliticizes gender and makes it a set of individual traits. Once again, we're blaming the victim, um, uh, removing the responsibility that society uh, has in reference to gender construction 
And of course, it's this, this idea of sex.